And welcome back to a fresh episode of the Business Growth Show. I'm your host, Sam Dunning, co-owner over at webchoiceuk.com. And if you haven't yet, check out our weekly emails where I'm sharing actual B2B marketing, website tips, useful podcasts, goodies, and more. You can give it a shot over at businessgrowth.email. So join me today. I've got Mark Killens. Mark's the Chief Marketing Officer over at Airme. Mark, welcome to the show, sir. How are we doing? Hey, I'm well. How are you doing today? Yeah, doing well. Thank you, man. Looking forward to this. A fresh topic, a fresh discussion for the show. We're going to be chatting all about exactly what event-led growth means and if it's worth it for B2B companies, for the audience tuning in today. So with that said, Mark, can you give us a snapshot? Because this term's fairly new to me, and I'm sure it is for, for many others. What the heck does event-led growth actually mean? Yeah, yeah. Before we even get into the definition, let's talk about like the problems, I guess, facing B2B go-to-market today. And love sure. to have you kind of chime in what you think the problems are. For me, and and you know how we think about it at Aramid, the first problem is B2B go-to-market has been traditionally led from like a company kind of first approach. So meaning the brand is, is representing itself um, across all these different channels, right? It, you know, if you think back to the heyday of like inbound marketing, it was about let's publish content. Like your business got to publish a lot of content. You got to engage in social mm. media. You got to, you know, use email effectively. You got to do all these things. And what's happened is so many companies now do that right? It's become the status quo. And what's happened is there's now a whole new wave of what I call brand spam in the marketplace. Right. It's, it's, okay. And it's across all these different channels, um, across a lot of types of content. So how do you stand out? And, and because of this change, so many buyers, especially buyers that are maybe age groups that are you know, the, the, gen, the gen Z, if you will, or millennials, they're more skeptical, right? But even people that have been buying software for 20, 30 plus years are, you know, skeptical and they only really at the end of the day, trust other people. Um, so there's a con, you know, a convoluted amount of things happening, if you will, to B2B go to market, not just in marketing, but in sales and CS that is forcing uh, a change to be had. That change is rethinking how you go to market for more of a people first approach. So when you think about like, well, what's a solution when you think about people first go to market, Right. You think events, in my opinion, and an event could be an online event, an in-person event, a webinar, a training. But anytime you get a group of people together live, Sam, that's when I what I think about as an event. It has to be live, though. Live is key. And with an event, you can't fake it. Like, look at the, us today. It's people. You, you can't, you know, we represent the brand. The brand's the platform, if you will, but we're representing the brand. So at the end of the day, we're trying to help people change how they establish that trust, connect with the audience initially, think through that through a much more people first event led growth motion. And if you use more events throughout your go to market, either at the top, middle or bottom of the funnel, you should ultimately get people to connect with you at a deeper level, remember you a bit better, um, captivate their attention a bit better, get better you know, data and intent signals, which goes to a lot of the notion of lead growth, right? Product led growth sales of growth, there has to be some type of data, data model behind it. Um, but at a high level, this is all about like how I've seen B2B go, B2B go to market change in the last 15 years. And I think we're at this inflection point. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an interesting discussion for sure. Um, and I think you're right. Like it's, it's hard to go to market for some companies, especially if you're in a saturated industry like you say, where there's so much content out there. So if you're in a, if you're trying to go to market in a mature segment where there's tons of competitors and perhaps the offer that you provide has been around for years and years and years, and if you're just knocking out the same content that all your other competition's doing, then how are you going to differentiate yourself? How are you going to stand out? Um, and I think you made an interesting point about prospects being skeptical um, and that they want to see, I suppose, the people behind the brand which is why I suppose so many people these days are having big success when it comes to LinkedIn personal branding and the such and the, the, the belt that, that the whack, the, the clout that that can have behind it. So people first approach, let's get a bit more into this. Um, so when I think you were, you're teeing up for this as well. So when we say event led, 
does that mean things like what what is that actually mean because when i hear events these days i think of kind of webinars and stuff like that and i in my own brain have good and bad connotations with webinars um so what yeah what what, to get to the meat of it if you were to kind of give us a two-liner on event-led growth what what would would that look like yeah it's using events of all types and sizes in person online all types and sizes to help you discover, engage, and grow your customers. That's what it is. And, and how you do that, you're using signals of buyer and customer intent because a great event, both before, during, and after the event, no matter if it's 30 minutes or three days long, you're getting a lot and are able to, if you so choose, you're able to collect a lot of information about the people signing up, showing up, engaging, watching the replays, engaging after the fact, there is so much amazing data that you can have. Just like a a product-led growth motion, you're getting all this great usage data. You can use this data to help you accelerate the time to pipeline, to revenue, um, if you use it in the right ways. First step is collecting it. Actually, the first step before even collecting it is is, hosting a good event. I guess that's kind of at the same time, if you will. But but hosting a great event that people find you know value in that they are excited from, um, and and how do they, how do you do that? You, you need to have people. You know, it, it's, a, it's a people first experience. Events are people first all day, every day, uh, and then you can collect it. You got to make sure you have the right technology and you do the right planning in order to collect it. There's so much data, like I was saying. We can go to some examples, but then you need sure. to actually use it and action it. Like actually, like say, hey, I got all this great data. For example. We had an awesome online event and we had 15 of our key accounts attend this event. Did we in real time notify the account owners that those people are at that event? Did we tell them what they were engaging with, asking about, if anything? Did they follow up? Like there's just a huge disconnect, I think, in most organizations when it comes to that. Um, So we're trying to make it easy for people to, you know, host great premium webinars and in dynamic events, help them collect amazing data about the people coming to the event um, and then help take that that signal, those signals, and, and use them in the marketing sales and CS functions at their companies. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to get into in a sec, Mark, kind of a almost a mini playbook of how we can set up an event that doesn't suck because I'm sure you'll probably agree with me that there's – I've sat on some webinars where i've literally flicked onto them for two minutes and all they've done is talked about their product or their company and then i've switched straight off um and i'm sure a lot of people have done the same but then likewise i've seen some great ones especially with um chris walker's the state of demand gen which now is revenue vitals which has changed the game i think a lot in the b2b market and there's been a few others since um so there's certainly a great way and a terrible way to go about these things um true but for any B2B businesses, companies, brands that are perhaps tuning in and thinking, this sounds like a, a ton of work. What would you say to anyone that's perhaps on the skeptical side of it, on the, the, the advantages that it's going to bring to the table? I mean, is content a lot of work to create? What do you think? Do you think, do I think content yeah. is? Yeah. I suppose it depends. Like, I'm used to it, right? Because I've been doing this show like three years. So I'm kind of in the swing of it. And the plus side is I enjoy it and I yeah. I co run a business. So I've, yeah. I suppose I'm at a slightly better advantage in the fact that I haven't got any higher execs tying me down or any red tape in my way. Um, yeah. So I, mean, I can just kind of do my own thing, if you see what I mean. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it, I think it depends on like, um, you know, what you think, like when you look at all your ways you can you can go to market these days, um, like I, I guess it's like effort versus impact, right? What are the activities that are going to give you high high impact, low effort? Those are the ones you want to do the most. Um, and for me, if you think about like a thirty minute online event, yes, you should spend about an hour and a half to two hours to plan the plan the event and do prep and rehearsal, or whatever. Um, but that's like a typical kind of webinar, um, 30 minutes doing it. And then a 30 to 60 minutes following up. That's like not even a day, Sam. Right. So I don't know. I mean, I, sure. and, and think about how much data you get, right. You can, you can think about, well, what data do I want to get upon registration? Or do I just want to try to enrich all those contacts? 
what data do I want to get during the event through purpose-built questions, polls, games, um, resources we share? How do I mm. want to track people's, um, you know, basically signals of interest in the event through what they click on, what they don't click on, what they watch, what they don't watch. Same with after the event, right? Like, and then how do I want to make sure that we identify the accounts that matter to us at the accounts that we don't really care about and the buyers that matter to us versus the buyers that don't matter to us at these events, right? Like imagine if you could do that with your show right now. Like that would be, I think, more, even more game changing for you, right? Like right now you're probably getting some high level engagement data, but you're not able to like actually connect it down to like to your customer list versus your target account list and like understand what they're doing versus what they're not doing. Um, you know, that's at the end of the day, I think when you think about like, the value of an event led growth approach versus like a content a piece of content. Yep. Unless you're using a sophisticated content delivery tool, which at the end of the day, then you have to have someone use it. Most people just download the PDF or look at a website page. You're getting a lot less signals, right? If someone shows up live, that within itself is a better signal of intent, in my opinion. Just like if someone signs up for your product and uses it, than anything else you could do in kind of marketing today. Yeah. Yeah. And you've, you've, put down an interesting point there which i'd not even thought about about the actual what you can ask for feedback wise from the audience during the event which is something i didn't even think about like for example i've got quite negative <laughs> thoughts of webinars like i've shared with you so far that from just ha from hands-on experience really more than more so than anything i sign up for webinar it might be good it might not be but then regardless, you've, you've already put in your name and your email and then you're probably getting chucked into a sequence with an SDR or a BDR and they're going to kind of drip feed you emails until you eventually book a demo or maybe they close you off their list. Um, but it sounds like what you're sharing, Mark, is so much more than that and actually making the event interactive and perhaps we should just go into, let's, let's just go into the process then in that case because we're kind of beating around the bush at the moment. So... Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about kind of what to do in the event and kind of some of your tips and best practices for how you can actually make an engaging one and get useful insights and data to help with um, go to market. Now, if someone wants to take an event led growth approach before they jump into the actual practicals, what are some of the, let's say the groundworks, the first steps that you should look to have in place? I mean, step one is always the who and the why. Who, who are you trying to design an event around? And then why would they show up and why would they engage? And then why are you doing the the webinar, right? So it goes back to the rule of like, you spend like 3X or 4X the amount of time preparing for a sales call versus executing a sales call. I'm, I'm not sure mm. that's the exact number, but it's something like that. It's the same thing for an event. Yeah. Um, spend more time planning it. It doesn't have to be a big, lengthy, long event, but the who matters. And then the other part of the who is who's going to host it. The right. key with all these like webinars now is you have to have people that actually give a damn. They actually have to like be excited about the topic, have passion for it, have real expertise, um, be okay with cracking jokes, making some mistakes, engaging the audience. Like you can't, if you're just talking at people, it's a video, forget it. Mm -hmm. It's not, you don't need a live event, you need a live, live event for that. If you're not thinking entertainment, like you're an entertainer, if you will, and you're trying to captivate someone's attention, yeah, those webinars are going to suck. I, I'll be straight up honest, right? Like they're not going to be interesting, you know. And just just record a podcast or record a video and call it a day at the, you know, and and you'll probably <laughs> you know won't have the greatest engagement on that either because you're not passionate or enthusiastic. But the the key is who is representing the brand. Who is the brand now? Go back to people first versus the brand is the platform, right? The brand is helping you host the webinar. Why are we hosting this webinar? Well, because Airmeet exists. You know, Airmeet helps people put on premium webinars and dynamic events. Cool. But but Airmeet is just like the, the, the entity that was created by people. So people at the end of the day need to be the ones to up their webinar game. Yeah, the technology can help. Technology definitely does help. Um, but... So much of it is predicated off the fact that you got to do it. You have to have a two-way, two-way experience with the audience. Versus most webinars are very push, not pull, yep. and they're just one way, right? And it's very, very boring and dull. Okay, all right. So step would one. Agree? Uh, would you agree? Like, yeah. You go to a lot of webinars. You said, like, do you feel like that's the yeah, case? yeah. I mean, I haven't sat on many recently, but certainly during COVID, like before 
when I was in the early days of setting up this podcast and just sitting on some and also being like I've lit I was also invited on panels like, over the years. I don't do many these days, but I've literally been on a panel on a webinar to talk about I don't know the state of marketing and I was just giving like website and SEO tips. Um and the other panelists were literally just pitching their product and I was like you're just going to drive people away. Like you're, li you're literally giving a call to action to your offer every five seconds. You're telling people to go onto your website. And it's, it's making me cringe. Like I, I dread to think what the people tuning in to this webinar, like setting aside time on their day are thinking, like what is going through your mind to do this? And like you say, it goes back to understanding the, the what you're trying to do with the, the offer, with the, the, the live show, um, who your audience is, having a host that, actually has hands-on expertise um, that's going to be engaging to, to the audience is not going to crack under pressure as what you'll find is you will get thrown some curveballs on these kind of shows as well with audience questions and stuff like that so you, that's that's certainly a fair point I'd say yeah I mean people just have to um be okay with it not being perfect I mean that's the mm. reason why I love live anything the auth yeah. authenticity about a live show and where they used to do a lot of tv shows live so good it's so it's so so good right um it also may it forces you to prepare more to some degree because you're like well it's live it's live so you have to be as on top of your game as best you can um but no i mean and again a lot of these things like people think oh the marketing team has to deliver webinars the marketing team might have to enable the webinar to happen but the marketing mm. team, in many cases, should not be the ones actually speaking on the webinars. That should be someone from your engineering team, maybe product team, other teams, like where they actually have the expertise, the the experience. It should be customers. It should be people in your industry, um, creators, right? That are that are like you said, the experts or the people that have uh, an audience that listens to them that cares about them, like get them to be the people in your webinars, right? If you, if I could, if I could have someone who, you know, I put on contract every quarter to do a webinar, if I wasn't selling to marketers, if I was selling to an audience where I wasn't an authority or had n nothing to do, you know, with understanding it that well, I would just have someone contract on my marketing team to be the host who has a really huge audience or a decent audience in that space and work with them. Like that's, that's another example of like company first versus people first, right? The company would think, oh, I got to host it. No, no, no. You just, you just enable it to happen. You don't host it because you don't yep. have any expertise. I mean, you have expertise, but you're like, you know, you're a brand at the end of the day, right? Like you need to pull someone in who actually is the expert. <laughs> yeah. 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 It makes sense. And in terms of the, the why, so in terms of what, what do you recommend? Because I know if you're trying to pitch these such an idea to probably to your leadership or your c-suite team ultimately they're going to want to know what revenue it's going to produce um but is there another mindset or approach you should take when you're setting up a strategy like this i.e this is what the short-term outcomes we expect and these are some of the long-term out outcomes we expect when setting up an event-led growth strategy yeah yeah i mean it's all about that audience definition why you're doing it and then you know where does the um where does the topic that you pick, you know, what's the topic and experience that you're trying to create? Where does that fall in the, like the buying cycle? Mm. Right. So for example, if you do a, a webinar or event on something that's very like thought leadership, like that's, that's nothing to do with your brand product, et cetera. Um, we're doing one tomorrow. In fact, with, with Nick Ben and I, we're talking about how he and I, how he joined Airbeat, how he and I worked together for many, many months on okay. the interview process, right? That like that's just all we're trying to do there is generate emails and have 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 a have a decent quality fit of those emails when it comes to an account standpoint. Pipeline might come way down the road. We might influence a pipeline or even inf influence a revenue, you know, you know, number in some way. But that's not the primary objective, right? Versus, hey, we're doing a live group demo every week, which we're, which we're going to be starting soon. That's going to be like, no, we're booking meetings and, and opportunities from this live group demo. That is the outcome. So, you know, that's the other thing when you think about event-led growth or product-led growth, any of these core go-to-market motions, where does it fit into the customer journey? And how does that moment in time relate to the audience and then in the events, you know, event like growth space, it's like the topic. The topic is going to dictate is going to dictate a lot of the the actual outcome you're trying to drive. Um, 
So yeah, you got you got to align five or six things. We're actually creating a whole template for people to use soon. It will be live, uh, you know, sometime in Q1, where you're going to be able to plan an event out within like a one page template that's going to help you make sure all of the key things are aligned so that at the end of the day, you, you do drive some type of business outcome. But I, the, the question of sourced, are you trying to source something versus influence something? You know, keep, you know, that's, that's software based attribution. If you look at your like uh, self-reported attribution, you might, you'll, you'll definitely see some different things too. You'll, you'll, you'll definitely see some different things. Um, we see, uh, events as being the second biggest source of self-reported attribution for us behind uh, organic Google. Um, okay. Very interesting. And, and is it fair to say that if you're going to adopt this strategy, you should go into it with very much a long-term mindset, just like maybe setting up a podcast that's perhaps not live, that over time, if you do it right, you can talk to a specific segment of your target audience you can give them educational content entertaining content and over time when they're ready you're positioning yourself as the, the kind of go-to brand in your space is it a similar kind of concept well yeah because the, the first thing you have to ask yourself is like are we are we accepting the fact that it's harder and harder to reach people because there's more competition channel delu um delusion has happened uh so many Many things are changing in, in B2B go to market. Um, it's, it's, it, and so many things are putting pressure on B2B go to market. So, like, if you, if you believe that and say, I want to change, then you're going to have to use some of these new approaches like community led or event led or product led. And yeah, you, you're going to have to invest in them for a good amount of time to see, to see, you know, momentum and returns. I mean, I, you could do a couple of these things as experiments, but I, I'm pretty confident after you do a couple of things, you know. You'll, you'll see success. Product -like growth is actually harder to kind of, you know, do experimentation on because it's such a big investment, right? When you think about some of these different ways you go to market, some are actually easier to try and see if it works versus others. Event-like growth is very easy to try. Um, but again, it requires you to think about how you do events differently, uh, how you collect that data differently, and how you actually use the data as part of like, your marketing or sales or CS function, Um because yeah, what we see is we, we you know we have people coming to our events all, you know all the time right we have three events this week our salespeople will just kind of just hey say hey great to see you at this event right now hope you're enjoying it let me know if you need any help just you know talk again in a few weeks or like whatever the next meeting is like it's just a touch point you know Forrester says 27 touch points are needed before someone becomes a customer now 27 <laughs> so like you know are you gonna have someone download 27 pieces of content? Probably not. <laughs> You're going to need to diversify that, you know? <laughs> yes, it's a lot. Um, but with that, you, you, alluded to do that, you alluded it to it then, Mark. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, this, this all sounds good and well, but I know for a fact I can adopt with my, let's say, a B2B tech company, I can adopt the sales-led approach and I can hire a few SDRs, reach out to my context, contact, start building conversations and drive pipeline. I can do a marketing-led approach, build an inbound engine, SEO, PPC, review sites, you name it, collect high-intent prospects, ready to talk to sales today. Product-led approach, like you say, probably more of an investment. You've got to build out the solution so it's freemium, free trial, and then a small percentage of those will convert into paid users. So typically quite a lot more investment groundwork, um, either externally or in-house. How does, how does this stack up? Um, is it something you should do as part of the all of that in one as a mix? Is it something you can do alone and, and see growth from? Or what are your thoughts there? Oh, yeah, do both. You can do it alone. You can do it together. I, I would argue content-led, or as you call marketing-led, is, is not something you can see quick results with. I mean, P PPC is different than inbound marketing, right? Like Versus, you know, content marketing, organic content, right? Like Both those channels are super crowded these days, more expensive than ever, it takes a long time to see results. Uh, an event, you can get results right away, right? Especially if you do it in partnership with another person or another brand or both. You're both driving leads. You're both driving promotion of it. Uh, you're both kind of participating in it. You get immediate results, right? Even before the event happens because you're getting people to sign up. Then you get data on people who show up. Then you get data on people who, how much they engage. Then you get data on who watches the replay. That's four different ways you can get a quick result versus content. 
that that's not going to be that quick. I can, I can guarantee you that. Um, and then you can take the event and turn it into content sales led. Mm. It's getting a lot harder. All the numbers that I've looked at and I see it on our own dashboard dashboards, especially in this tough economy, way more spam, way more generic messages, way less ways to get in front of people. I mean, you got to use some advanced technology. You got to do account-based intent targeting. You got to do buyer intent targeting. You got to, you know, th just the old way of like, just, just, you know, emailing people and like calling them up and trying to get their attention that way. It's becoming a lot, lot harder. Could you use event led growth to supplement that? Absolutely. Can you use event led growth to get to content faster? Yeah. Cause you can start with events and then turn them into content. Or if you have content, turn those, those pieces of content into an event. Cause then you can get more information about your audience who really, who really, really cares about this topic. Because again, they're willing to give you time during a specific day during their week to actually show up and listen, right? The people again listening live to this, those might be some of your biggest fans, best customers, Sam, because they're showing up right now on a Monday. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, right? It's, it's, it's interesting when you compare it to like different things. Yeah. Mark, I want you to get into um, share with us now what will be quite useful as well is how can we get our ideal clients to make sure they actually event attend some of these events. And secondly, how can we collect that data that you mentioned, i.e. not just your standard name and email to signing up, but you mentioned like during the event, make it interactive. What are some tips to actually get useful insights and then leverage those insights onwards for the sales process? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the first thing is all about the topic and the guests and what you're promising them. So how you create like a, an actual run of show and agenda, how you actually explain to them, hey, we're going to be playing some games. We're going to have some live music. We're going to do a break. We're going to keep it fast moving, dynamic. The people matter a lot, though. It goes back to the guests, right? Um, you got to think of the event as a product. So you're marketing the product, if you will, right? The product is an experience. Um, hey, we're going to be announcing a new piece of content at the event or announcing a new feature or, or you know, you got you to incentivize them in some way. We're not going to record it, whatever, right? Like get them to show up. The second piece, I'll just <laughs> selfishly say, just use AirMeet because we help you track all that stuff really easily and we'll help you make sure the event is set up from the beginning with that in mind hey what are you trying to capture from an event standpoint with your attendees okay great why are you trying to capture that how is that going to help one of your different go-to-market teams um so yeah i mean you, you just have to again plan like what are you looking to to learn about this audience or what are you looking to do um because you're doing this event like long term, maybe it's about getting product feedback. Maybe it's more voice to customer type event. Uh, maybe it has nothing to do with meetings or revenue, and you're just trying to collect information about upcoming features. We do that a lot too. We do that every six months. We show the roadmap and say, "What do you folks think?" We get hundreds of data points around how people react to when we share a new feature. Mm. How many emojis do they use? How do they respond? Do they leave comments? Do they like that stuff is gold, right? Versus another feature we launch or announce, and like no one really cares about it. So. It goes back to the intentionality you have to give to some of these things, just like a good product-led growth strategy or sales-led growth strategy is being intentional and being focused. Uh, but I think a lot of people like, think events or content is like, oh, as long as we do it, everything's going to be fine. But you, you can't, that's not the way anymore. <laughs> you can't do yeah. that these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of getting live feedback at scale as well. So not necessarily just doing this with the idea of booking more meetings for your sales team and as a massive follow-up project. But like you said, that those other angles were interesting. Like if you're thinking of produ um, producing new features or changing your offer or adding a new offer or hitting a new target market or something like that, to get that live feedback at scale from your target market is invaluable, right? Yeah, huge. huge. I mean, it's massively valuable. Um, and you could do it through interactive ways, through games, Kahoot, uh through jeopardy style game. there's so many ways you could play fun games in online events mm. now um and actually i would argue that sometimes an online event creates more audience participation than an in-person event because again if you're if your in-person event is mostly just someone talking at the audience why why would i show up to that that's just a video like or i could just do that live online like i'm not going to many in-person events anymore that are just people presenting to an audience that is in my opinion, pretty, pretty like 2019 experience. It's kind of like those days are gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and in terms of actually, you mentioned a few points just now, but in terms of actually marketing these live events, is it something we have to stick 
ad spend behind? Have you found you can still get enough of the right attendees from perhaps just posting it on social or to an email list? Or what are some recommendations there? Uh, I mean, do, doing promotion with, with partners is important. Doing promotion through influencers and creators is important. Uh, promoting it via your website, usually a highly underrated thing people don't focus enough on. Uh, email. Those would be way my top four or five before paid, <laughs> anything paid. Um, I mean, if it's a very targeted event, you might do some stuff with paid. If you can really dial in your paid using something like Six Sense or Demand Base and you get some really good targeting going on. Um, some of the best ways to do this is through your SDR, BDR, AE team. Like get them to get people to register. I can't tell you how many people register for our events at, at Aramid and my mm. past companies through just outreach through your AEs, BDRs, AMs, like huge channel. Like, I, yeah, I, to me, it's, it's less about, um, it's, it's rethinking all these different ways you thought go to market was, was valuable over the last five, 10 years. It's like, no, no, no. It, it's like, how do we go people first? Right. A lot of those things I just mentioned were like a people first, right? If you send an email, don't make it a blast vanilla brand email, make it come from the host of the event and have people reply. Like we do that at Airme now. We have the hosts or people out speaking at the event have, have the email come from them. We get 10 to 15 replies back, not to mention a lot more people signing up. So yeah, some nice tips. And and to wrap up, we touched on it a little bit, but what are your recommendations kind of post live show? Mark, in terms of getting best bang for your bucks, let's say we've done the live event, any best practices around then repurposing, repackaging? Yeah, yeah. I mean, de you definitely want to like, you know, do all those things that people talk about. I mean, I, I think it's about like, well, what what do you want um, the, the audience who showed up or versus didn't show up, but who the people who did show up, if you put them into kind of three categories, low, medium, high intent. What do you mm. want the ideal people that are showing high intent to do next based off of like, again, who they are? Are they your ideal customer? Are they part of, are they your customer already? Not a customer, medium intent, low intent, right? We have capabilities inside of Airme that allows you to segment your event audience and create different email follow-ups and different ways to then give that data to the different account owners on your team to follow up with them. You know, for high intent, I would treat them very differently than people with low intent uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, segmentation. So again, if you're not looking at your data like that, you probably need a better, better piece of technology to help you, you know, get that data. Cool. Cool, man. Um, and any other unusual tips that we have or any other unusual advantages before we wrap things up that we've not covered that people might not expect to, that can actually be brought to the table from live events and event like growth strategy. I mean, like this is interesting, right? This is an example of like, uh, well, I guess it's, I guess the only live audience is through LinkedIn, or you don't have an audience within within Streamyard. But um, you know, I mean, that's that's an interesting take too. Like tomorrow, we're doing an event that's going to be hosted on Airmeet, so people can engage and experience things on Airmeet, and then they could also see it via LinkedIn. So like, or you could do YouTube or Facebook. So that allows you to kind of have you know a, a bigger reach, maybe, but then also better participation, engagement data, etc., intent data about your audience. So. I, you know, I, I see a lot of people doing that, but they're probably not doing it in the best possible way because they're missing one part of that equation. Um, so anyway, like that, that's just some thoughts there. I, I think, yeah, don't, don't be, um, don't be afraid to try things. I'm telling you, like, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, you learn something. I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. Webinars definitely have this negative connotation. Um, at the end of the day though, like the webinar has got to be, thought of as as a term that helps you engage a live audience online and and then it really what matters is how you engage the live audience like how do you actually sell the product that is the webinar if you will to the to the audience for them to show up and then participate to me it all comes down though sam to like and you've talked you talked to a lot of people on this podcast right you've spoken to a lot of people you know which guests or better guests than other guests, right? You know, like mm. I'm sure you have that barometer in your head, you know, and like you can tell. Of course, you know? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's like you say. Um, I think, like you mentioned at the start, strategy is so key. Um, understanding what actions you want people to take, what you want people to learn, what you want people to understand, what you want them to eventually do, and then you say, like you say, the host 
Um, and there's a whole discussion around that, whether you do just one host, whether you bring on guests and the strategy behind that. So knowing the outcomes you want and then actually producing content that your prospects, that the audience is actually going to give a damn about when watching or listening in um, rather than just trying to ram your company's value prop down their throat, try and give them something that's going to edu edu educate or entertain them. And then um, you might have a chance of building some brand reputation, building some authority, building some trust, then lifeline lifelong customers so mark i want to thank you for sharing your thoughts enjoyed the chat my friend with that you've talked a little bit about it but share more about how people can access air meet and anything you else you would like to direct our audience to today uh, yeah just go to airmeet.com you can connect with me on linkedin that's the place i'm most active these days would love to chat happy to do like an event-led growth strategy session to your point sam with anyone if you want to talk about it we witnessed this firsthand at Drift. One of the many reasons why I decided to join Aramid was like we were using an event-led growth strategy at Drift before it was, you know, coined a term, if you will. Um, so yeah, we're always open to help people. So love to connect. Nice one, man. We'll put all those links in the show notes at businessgrowth.marketing. And with that, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. No worries. And as always, if you enjoyed today's episode, a quick rating or review on Apple or Spotify is appreciated. Or if you're on YouTube, a quick subscribe goes a long way. And we should catch you on the next one for more no BS, actionable B2B marketing tips to grow your business and grow your revenue. Catch you on the next one.